episode of the Homie Game Guru. Now you're probably asking yourself, why am I surrounded with a picture of Stephen Colbert and Ellen DeGeneres with holes all around them? Well in this episode I'm going to show you how to make a game called Beanbag Toss. Very simple concept where you just take a blown up picture of anything you want. It could be friends, it could be family, it could be of yourself, it could be of celebrities, of landscapes. You blow up the picture and put different size holes around them with different point values. And the game is simply taking bean bags or balls and with the opponents throwing them through the holes from a certain distance and depending on who gets the most points is the winner. In this episode, I'm going to make something that is more associated to kids and I want this for to be shown for adults who want to make something special for their kids, a very simple game. And so we're going to try something a little bit different. Namely, we're going to be doing something with Sesame Street. Now, like most preschool kids, my young niece is a huge fan of Sesame Street. And she, you know, has a great pitching arm, and I want to help cultivate that pitching arm. And she's also great at math, so I know making a beanbag toss game for her would be a great asset. So what I'm going to do is take Sesame Street, uh, this picture of all the characters here, and blow it up into the size of that Stephen Colbert or Ellen DeGeneres picture I showed you and make a beanbag toss game for her to play with. Even though beanbag toss is a very simple concept, because of the cutting tools and glues that we need to make the finished product and the computer skills that are necessary, I suggest that the parents are the ones who do the majority of the work on this one. Plus, as a parent, you would love to make something that's fun and entertaining for your kids as a special surprise. In order to make our beanbag toss game, the first type of material that you need is a very large spare piece of cardboard. The cardboard should be able to fit at least a 22 inch by 34 inch image because that is the size we're going to blow up the picture to. Next is all the other components, which includes the actual image that you want to use. Get at least three bean bags or small rubber balls that both you can get at the dollar store, but I suggest bean bags because they're softer and they won't injure anyone. I would say three to four different marker colors. These marker colors will be used to indicate the points per the circles that we're going to cut out. You need, I would say, minimum three different circular sized objects which will be used to create the actual circle. So here I got for the smallest circle an actual drinking glass. The next size up is a funnel and the, the biggest size will be a plastic lid. So just find things around your house that are cylindrical in size of different sizes and that will be used to trace out the holes. And the final two components we need are spray glue and exacto knife or cutting blade. It is because of these two items why I suggested that this is for adults to create because kids should not be using any sharp blades or tools and an exacto knife or cutting blade is needed to cut out the actual image from the cardboard that we'll be sticking it onto. And of course with spray glue, it is not toxic, but it can get onto clothes and on skin. So it's just best that an adult handles this. Now in order to make our blown up very large uh, beanbag toss game and to take our picture that we want to blow up, what we need is to utilize some computer skills. Now there's many different programs out there you can use, like Adobe Photoshop, uh, Acrosoft Photo Impression, Google Picasa, uh, Nova Photo Explosion, and even Microsoft Picture It. There's a whole bunch of programs out there. The main thing is that you need a program that you could take a smaller image and blow it up to a larger image. Depending on which graphics program you want to use, all you need to do is pull up the image. Now, what you need to do from this stage is blow it up even larger. Now, what I have is the original 8.5 by 11 size image. What I did is using the program I blew it up to 22 by 34. Now the reason why it's 22 by 34 is because the final image is going to encompass four sheets of ledger sized paper which is 11 by 17. So each one of these squares here, if you could see the blue line that divides it four ways, each one of these squares is 11 by 17. So when you put the final size at 22 by 34, it will give you four 11 by 17 sheets. So once you get it that large, what you need to do is actually isolate each one of these parts.
to make individual files. Every program that has pitcher capabilities has a cropping tool. So all you need to do is when you actually blow it up, simply isolate a part of the pitcher that you want when you have the four quadrants, use the crop tool, and just enter it. And there you go. It crops down to the actual size that you wanted. So now from that big 22 by 34 inch blown up pitcher, we now cropped one quarter of it down to the 11 by 17 size that we need. And you do that for each of the parts of the actual image. So again, you step backward and you go to another part, use the crop tool, and voila. And you do this for all four parts. And then you save each of the four parts separately. And I suggest saving them as a PDF or a high resolution TIFF image. Probably not a JPEG because that will actually lower the resolution when you actually print it out. And of course, there's always a risk that when you blow up images from the original size that it will degrade the picture and lower its quality. So you have to fiddle around with the, um, the actual settings in the program that you use to get a higher quality picture. So from our original 8.5 by 11 image, now that we've taken it to our computer, blown it up by 22 by 34, split it into four parts of 11 by 17 by cropping it, and taking it to the print and copy store, what you should have now are four 11 by 17 sheets that encompass the whole image. So here are the two bottom parts, and then of course the two top parts. So after you've arranged them, cut out the actual excess white spaces and glued them together onto that large piece of cardboard. This is what the final part should look like. Now it's at this stage where you decide where you want to put your circles. Now I have my three different circle types. My actual drinking glass, which will be the smallest circle and the one with the most amount of points. My next biggest one, which is just a regular funnel, and then a plastic cover, which is going to be my biggest target, which is the least amount of points. So pretty much all you have to do is just decide where you want it to be. And you do that throughout the whole part, where you just put circles wherever you want. And then once we actually set up all our circles, we're going to cut them out and then decide how many points we want to put per circle. As I showed you in the beginning of the video that we use a utility knife and this should not be used by children whatsoever. Now the reason why we use a utility knife or a sharp blade over scissors is because one cardboard is very thick material and scissors has a very difficult time cutting through it. And also when it comes to cutting the actual inside of an image a utility knife is a lot better because you could just simply cut out the inside of the image without cutting from the border inside, which of course will ruin the image. So with your utility knife, just slowly take your time on a table, of course, I'm just showing you this for demonstration purposes, but on a table, just slowly cut around the circumference of the circle. So here is my actual final beanbag game. I cut out all the circles, I decided where I want my circles to go and when you are doing yours, you'll decide where your circles go. I have different sizes, so I have my biggest, my next biggest, and then of course the smallest. And I cut out the perimeter of the excess cardboard. So now pretty much to get this complete, the only thing left to do is to add some points to the circles. Now the way I base it is that the bigger the circle, the less points because it's easier to get into the bigger circles and of course the opposite for the smaller circles you get more points because they're more difficult. So what I have is different colored markers. And what I'm going to do is, depending on which points I'm going to give to what, I'm going to give it a different marker color. So now our actual beanbag toss game is complete. It's cut out, it has the holes, it has the points. It's actually ready to be played. You can hold it up, you can have two people holding it up if you want. And I hope you have a great challenge with it. And it's ready for the challenge of my niece now. Hopefully she'll like it.